I'm your three-year-old son, and I'm sitting in the back seat, and I'll do anything for your attention. Mom! 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 Mommy! Mom! Mom! Make sure you build good faith to protect your family from mayhem like me. Well, did that happen to you this morning? If there's going to be a fight, it's usually because you're going to church. That's always been, that was always our fight growing up was uh, Sunday morning. My mom played piano, my dad led music. And so that meant that we're going to make it as hard as possible. Okay. Mama called us three wild Indians. I will tell you this for sure. I've told you this before, but my mom said, don't ever have kids. She said, just, I'm telling you, she said this, she said, don't ever do it. He said, they will, they will kill you. Do not have children. And I thought, wow, Mama, that really makes me feel better. You know, I'm one of your children kind of thing. There's three of us. I have an older brother named Alan. I'm the middle child, and I have Brian. You just saw him out here. Uh, Brian was the worst. I'll go ahead and tell you. <laughs> the baby's always the one catching everything. Brian was the worst, uh, but Brian was very creative. So Brian would always try to hide something on Sunday morning so that uh, he wouldn't have to go to church. Okay, because we went to church all the time. So Brian would hide shoes and clothes, but the best thing he ever did was he hid himself. And he hid it. I don't know if you have a clothes hamper. You know what? Y'all remember what? I don't know if y'all. Okay. Well, Brian's in a clothes hamper. You know how it smells, right? I guess when you're a kid, nothing matters. Nothing matters. Brian got in the clothes hamper and covered himself with socks. And he stayed there. And we hollered. I mean, and we went around the house. I remember this. You know, and it wasn't that day where, like, you call 911, my child's missing. But we knew that, that Brian was in the house. But anyway, we found him, and we finally got to church. But it was always like what you just saw. There was a fight. Somebody is yelling and screaming, and I love this part. The mom and dad would be yelling and screaming, and you're always catching that, you know, coming like that. Okay? You know, we didn't have seatbelts back then. Y'all you know, remember that? Well, they were there. Okay? But so we were jumping and moving because daddy was swinging. And we're just, <laughs> and they're screaming and yelling, and then they get out of the car and walk into church. Praise God. I'm like, wow, we just should stay in here, you know, because it's safer in here than it is in the back seat of a car. So th that was kind of what happened to us. One of the things we're going to talk about as a family in the family series is figuring out, learning how to move from roommate to soulmate, because most marriages are basically roommates now. And uh, you're trying to find the love, and where did it go, kind of thing. My daughter is 11 years old, and I'm learning a lot, okay? I'm learning too much, and I'm, some mornings uh, she'll wake up, and she'll be like my daughter that I put to bed, right? And then some mornings she wake up, and I'm like, I don't know where you went, you know, kind of thing. But I'll get into more of that. But she's picked up this thing. Uh, I think it's Doug, D the Duggars, 19 and counting. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, I got that one. So, 19. Let's just don't walk over that number and just go like, oh, wow. Now, it's more than a football team. I mean, it's amazing that they just, I don't know if they're having any more. I don't know what, I don't know, okay? They're much more spiritual than I am with children. But what I do like about it, I think they're independent Baptists, and they're really strict when it comes to dating, okay? And my daughter, who's 11, likes it. So, I'm saying, go watch that, Okay? The, my wife, then, my, now my wife's in on it, and I never watch it. And so this one, this happened last week or two. Y'all may, if you're following this, one of the daughters is going to get married, okay? Going to get married, and here's the rule, okay? Wow, you cannot kiss until you are married. What a wonderful rule. I am so about that rule right now. And my daughter says, Daddy, is that true? Yes, it is. You should never kiss until you, I don't even know if you can hold hands. Maybe no holding hands? Wow, I'm loving this show more and more. But anyway, everybody's watching this, and when I'm in there, and I'm going back and forth. And so we get to the moment where you're going to kiss the bride, right? No. Then I watched this, and they went right past that part. 
And then all of a sudden the pastor walks out and says, you may have noticed that they did not kiss the bride. They wanted to go and have a private kiss. And I went, Ugh. okay. Daddy, why'd you do that? Oh, nothing, nothing. I think that is wonderful. That's what they should do. So they went and had a private kiss. It'd be, it would be really nice if marriage could stay like that, you know? <laughs> and then you, but you have to, you know, then you go home. And where, you know, and now we got to turn this house into a home. And most of us turn into roommates rather than soulmates. And that wasn't the way it was intended. And so some of your marriages that you're dealing with right now isn't what you thought it was going to be. It's all different. And we're, thought we're supposed to be in love. And we do things to create love. And we'll talk about that. And so, but most of you, I want to give this thought to you. Most of you basically deal with your children and your spouse just on the physical level. But you're a spiritual being and you never deal with the soul part of your marriage or the soul part of your children. And what I'm going to do is tell you what it looks like when you're dealing with the soul part of both of those things. You will, listen, you won't be happily married if you just deal with one of these things, which is the, the physical part of marriage. And I'm not talking about sex either. That's, another, that's a whole new subject out there. And all of you woke up with that one. Thank you for looking at me. So that's a whole new deal. But we're trying to deal with each other on a physical level. But we are a mind, soul, and body. There's three things that are going on. It's easier to deal on the physical level than it is the soul level. Because the soul level is going to take some energy and take some time. But that's how God deals with us. So let me help you real quick. When you're dealing with marriage, uh, God relates to us in spirit because we are spirits. So he's wanting to you to relate to each other in spirit. You're a soul to soul, soul mates, that kind of thing. So that's kind of how he sees things. And that's why marriage was created, by the way. So that you could learn to love each other, dealing with each other soul to soul the way God deals with us. It's like a training ground on how to deal with God and how to love God the way we love each other. But it hasn't worked out too well. Because the family is kind of a mess. We got all kinds of things we call family. We have divorced, we have widows, widowers, widows, we have single moms, single dads, we have grandparents raising kids, and now we have this collage of mess that's not anything we think of as the traditional family. So now we've thrown all this mess together, and most of us are trying just to get through life. My day is filled with, where's the brush, wear your clothes, because I don't want you to go to school naked. That's how we do it, okay? And then she has a better idea of what to wear. The greatest thing that I have found is that girls now, you don't have to have matching socks. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so you know what I do? I grab everything, every sock in the house. I don't care if it's mine. And I throw it in this big old basket. Because whatever I pick out, listen very carefully, whatever my wife picks out, whatever I pick out, it's not the right color. Okay, you, you understand what I'm saying here? We have an 11-year-old, and nothing's going to work out. She says, where's my socks? And I just point to the basket. Get whatever you want. I don't care if you're wearing mine. I don't care. Just make sure you get. This is, this is Monday morning. Get to school. I'm not very spiritual. This is not a spiritual moment. This is don't go to school naked. Find the brush. And here's the other part. Look, what are we eating? Like nobody thought of this. Like we eat all the time and nobody thought it. So here I am. And, and so I want you to know that we do not walk around the house quoting scripture and then singing kumbaya and holding hands and praying. I'm like you. I'm not good at it. Some days I'm better than others. I try. At least I have a thought. Okay, I have a thought. You know, there, we're, we're moving into roommates and now we're just like, parents in the house with children and here's your thought let's get them to 18 god help me just get them to 18 i don't want to hurt them you know and sometimes i'll be just like, oh you know so let's just get them to 18 but i don't think that is that really what we want to do my wife and i've been married 27 years and how i know that she told me <laughs> hallelujah you know and i said it seems like just one guys you need to use that that worked out really good, okay? 27 years, no lie, on our honeymoon, we went for a whole week. 
You know, you don't get to do that. Most people like three days. We went a whole week on our honeymoon. I don't know how we worked it out. So we decided to go to a movie. My wife's, we're going to a movie as a married couple for the first time. I was like, yeah. it was like great. I played golf. Oh, it was all, oh, you know. So we're going to this movie. We're in love. Lord have mercy, we're in love. You know, every, everything she does is just like, I can't believe it, you know. So we decide to go to a movie, and here's what the movie is. True story. She took me to see Fatal Attraction. <laughs> and she'd go. She pointed. I got it. Married 27 years. Everything's good. And uh, not going to do that. Okay? I saw that in the movie. I thought, I'm not going to do that. So the idea is, though, that we're going to try to, as a family, we're, we're, we're going to try to stay in love. And what will happen if you're not careful, you will try to stay in love based on physical things. And not just a physical contact, but physical things. You will do it with your children. You will do it with your marriage. We were going to buy this. We're going to have that. We're going to go on this. And you will substitute all of those things for love and trying to stay in love. And all you have to do is attend to the soul and everything changes. And you have, to be, you have to be aware of that, that we're not just flesh and blood, but we are a spirit. And most people will not attend to the soul. Let me give you a couple of things real quick. Let's look at the traditional home and what it was supposed to look like and why God created it. It's in Genesis 2, 18. The Lord said, it's not good for man to be alone. Okay? Bunch of animals out there and we need something else. He says, I will make a helper, watch this, suitable for him. E-Harmony, uh, Match.com, whatever it is out there, GodHelpMe.com, whatever it is out there, they're going to do this. They're going to deal with the physical things of what you like. If you like to hike, you like tomatoes, whatever you like. And you're going to try to match you up based upon what you like. Because you've heard this, that opposites attract. Opposites will kill. It's better to have things in common than not. So just let's... Let's get over that thought. But all you're looking at is physical things, what they like, what, you know, what kind of perfume, what kind of shoes, or whatever. And so that's how it happens. So you have something that's suitable for him. So God found out. So the Lord said, or the Lord caused a man to fall into a deep sleep. Most of you have slept through your marriage to begin with. It's time to wake up. Okay? While he was sleeping, there was a movie. My wife loved this movie, those sweet love stories. He took one of the man's ribs, and then he closed up the place with the flesh, with flesh. Then Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought it to her to the man. Brought her to the man. He was very happy. She was the most beautiful things, things he'd ever seen in his life. Very happy. Now, he's been looking at animals most of his, for all this time. So this was a very good thing for him. That is why the man leaves his father and mother, and he not to his wife, and they become one flesh. It is the one-to-one that equals one is God's math. Getting everybody as one on the same page. Imagine all the things that we have in a traditional family now versus what we have now. Grandparents raising kids. We had divorced people. We have widowers. We have all these. Imagine two divorced people. Now they're going to get married and both of them have two kids. Now let's slam all of that into the house. And let's throw it all in there. And let's make sure everybody's going to get along. And everybody's going to be happy. Really? Okay, so how are you going to do that? You're going to buy this. You're going to see that. You're going to go on this trip. We're gonna, you see, we're always dealing with the physical. And so when it comes to this one-to-one -one and this spiritual thing, this is why God says, do not marry a non-Christian because you'll never have the oneness I'm talking about. We're not just physical beings. We are spiritual in nature. And if we don't tend to the soul and we don't take care of the soul, you won't have a marriage. Your children, all you'll be doing is dealing with the physical. They'll be wanting iPads. They'll be wanting this. You'll just feel you want and want. You can't substitute things for the soul. Your marriage is going to die. Your children are going to grow up, and you're not going to have any time with them at all. I don't care what your children scream about or what they want and what they like. Here's the bottom line. They want you. Whether that be a single parent, single dad, grandparent, our traditional home, they want you. 
and you're trying to substitute you with an iPad, and there is no app for that. You hearing me? The problem we have is we're not attending to the soul matters, and we are made of spirit, and we're not just body. And if we don't deal with those things on a soul level, you're not going to be married, and, you're not, and your kids are going to grow up without you. And you're trying to get, watch this, you're saying, I want my kids to have it better than I had it. What does that actually mean? What are you saying? Let me read something to you. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man of his dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. We are a living soul with a body. And God wants to connect soul to soul. When you fail to connect soul to soul with your spouse or soul to soul with your children, you're going to be in trouble. Things are not going to go the way they're supposed to. You're always, listen, there'll never be enough electronic anything. There'll never be enough house. There'll never be enough car. There'll never be enough trips. Because you cannot substitute the physical things for the soul things. And that's what's happening in our marriages over and over again. My brother Alan, let me tell you real quick. My brother Alan, I didn't, you know, I had to bet. Forgive me if you're new. I have to bet with my older brother. That's how he understands things. To go to church. Okay. So he went Easter and I told you he would go to Easter. I didn't bet with him. But now he calls me. He says, this is what he says to me. I know we were all raised in the same house, and now y'all much more spiritual than I am. It's how he talk. But how do you know if you're saved? So this is the new conversation. So he starts talking about this, and then he says to me, he says, is it possible that I can, like, have one prayer and take away all my bad stuff? Okay, well, salvation will do that. But he says, no, not that. I want to know if there's one prayer, like, can fix my life. I can just pray it one time, and I'm done. And I said, well, well, no. What do you mean? I said, well, here's your pro- this has been your problem all along. You've had these feelings that God, see, God's calling you to him or calling you back, and you're having these feelings, but you don't want to practice. So you'll come in and you'll go out. You'll come in and go out. He said, what do I do? And this is exactly what I tell you every weekend. It's a, it's a, it's a basic of Christianity. It's a big four, repray, serve, and give. So what do I do? I said, you're going to have to pray. He says, every day? I said, Yeah. Really? Every day. I said, go to the book of John. And he said, where is that? I said, New Testament. I said, well, I think I got, I got that. I said, well, good. Go to John and read the New Testament. Read a chapter a day. Pray every day and call me in three. He said, you think that's going to do it? I said, absolutely. So you have a spirit involved, not a flesh. If you fail to practice the things of God, you're going to always be in and out. How do you grow spiritually if you don't communicate with God? How do you grow if you don't practice the things of God? If you don't do the God stuff, how do you grow? It is the same way with your marriage. If you don't practice being in love and feeding the soul, you will have a divorce. And you will treat your children the same way. You think your children want it better than you or you want it better for them? What does that mean? Well, they're not going to go without And they're not going to have a, you know, they're going to have this house. They're going to have, listen, that's not what they're looking for. When I was in Africa, listen very carefully, they got one pair of shoes a year. And the girls got one dress for Easter. So, and they they were happy. Something's wrong, see. You got to learn to feed the soul and not the flesh. Or it will never work. This is the things you're going to have to understand when it comes to family. How important is family to you? When we only spend one to two minutes a day, dads, with our daughters and our children, we throw an iPad on them and sit in another room. We go, go ahead. You know what my daughter wants to do with me? She wants to play school. But she wants to play it at the wrong time every time. You notice how that works? Well, Dad, I want, I want to play school. It's Saturday night. I'm trying to be spiritual. I have to study. We got to do this thing on Sunday morning. I don't have time for it. Really? Here's your iPad. Go find a new app. I'll even buy it. You're going to mess up. A CEO, true story, was on the airplane. 
actually he was an executive with his company, and the CEO called him in. He said, I need to talk with you. Didn't tell him why. He thought, I'm going to lose my job. They put him on a commercial, not a commercial jet, but a private jet, sent him out. Halfway over, everything went wrong. Plane started shaking. They started losing altitude. He, they came back to him. They said, I don't think we're going to make it if we don't fix this. So you need to be ready for the crash. He said, at that moment, the meeting was not important. He said, I just realized what I haven't done for my family. I've given them everything, but I haven't given them me. The plane landed and he quit. He said, I'll never do this again. If family counts, then family counts. You see, don't give me a bunch of stuff. Don't fill my house with things that somebody else is going to sell at the jockey lot after you're gone. Give me you. Why aren't you in love anymore? What happened? You see, this is what I'm talking about. We're moving toward the physical and we're not nourishing the soul. The soul takes time. God said to be still and know that I am God. Hang out. Spend time. I left my wife sick this morning. I left her sick. I made sure she was taken care of. I wrapped her in a blanket. She was shaking. She has a fever. And she says, I'll pray for you. It'll be okay. Just catch him when you get home. Okay, so, so how, how, do y'all, how do you do that? See what I'm talking about? We got to connect on a soul level. Not just on a physical level. It isn't about how many things you can get or how many things you can give away or how many trips you can take your children on. We have got to get with our kids and get in their life. They want you. You know what your wife wants? You. Well, maybe not today because she's probably mad. How do you get from I love you and first kiss to I, don't, I hate you? What are the enemies real quick? Let me help you real quick. We got to be careful with the word divorce because it, it, it's, it's coming if you're not careful. Don't let, the way you have a divorce is you just don't do anything in your marriage. Just don't do anything. Don't have date nights. Don't love each other. Don't spend time. I take my wife to coffee at least once a week. I, you, know, you know, I just want to dream with her. We got all these things written on the board. How many people see we're helping and how many places we're going to go. It's just not about vacation. We've taught our daughter to give. It's a basic principle of Christianity because giving restores the soul. Helping others restores the soul. If it's all about you, you will die. And so will your marriage. My daughter thinks if I go to McDonald's, I got to buy something for somebody else. So if I don't have a lot of money, I don't go to McDonald's. That's what happens. You know what my daughter did? I can't believe this happened. She's been on a little a trip they had here at the church. Had a little sleepover. She came back there and she just hugged on me and loved me. I don't know if somebody told her this or not. I'm, I'm suspicious right now. Because usually my daughter, when I see her the first time like today, she doesn't say, I love you, Daddy. Oh, you're the best dad in the world. I just can't believe I have you as a dad. Don't you wish you'd hear those things? She'll say, what are we going to eat? That's how it works. The enemy is going to be divorced, and all you have to do is nothing. Just be selfish and do nothing, and you will get a divorce. You got to be careful. A couple of things you need to know with substance abuse or whatever, but not even abuse, alcohol plays a big deal in breakups. You just got to be careful with the alcohol. I'm not saying it's the wrong thing to do or the, you, whatever. You, you have to judge whatever, but you got to be really careful about bringing things into your marriage that substitute for other things. You got to be really careful. The physical things. And of course, the last thing of, that messes up the marriage is the materialism that we deal with. We think things are going to do it, and it's not. You have to deal on the soul level. Listen, a dinner or an outing or sitting down and communicating with your wife and talking about life, that's what, it, it, listen, you have to find what nourishes your soul. It's the same way with God. You can't have a relationship if you have no time for it. God wants to connect with you. God wants to have a relationship. And somebody's got to step up to the plate and say, this is my day. 
Listen, you will always have to start over in your relationships. You will have to all the time because we're not made to continue, just continue, continue. It's not one prayer and everything works. It's not one prayer. It's many prayers. It's much time that is spent together. That's what changes marriage. That's what nourishes the soul. And we've got to be careful that we don't substitute the physical things for the spiritual things. And it happens every time. And we've got to be careful of that. Let me give you a couple of things real quick. Um, one of the things that will help fix this is that we, you're going to have to have a communication where you talk and you actually dream again. For some of you, you have no dreams. You're paying bills and raising children. Well, how much fun is that? You go to work to raise kids and pay bills. And then you don't even have time for that because there's too many things in your life. The more you bring into your life, the more it weighs down your soul. This is what Jesus tried to tell us in the New Testament. Give away what you have. Remember the rich guy? Give away what you have. Your soul is so weighted down, you can't do anything. Every time you bring in a car, every time you bring in another child into the world, these are these things you have to pay attention to. Because the more you have, the more you have to do. And the less time for the soul and the people you love the most. You have to be really careful. The emotional oneness that God talks about. The respect for one another. The love for one another. For heaven's sake, somebody wash some dishes. I love vacuuming. You know that. I had to wash dishes last night. I had to get dinner for my wife. She did not feel good. Let me tell you what she did. Are you ready for this? I go to get the dinner. I come home. You know what she did? She made brownies. For him. Throw that one in there. Hey, you know. Because she didn't feel good. It, she didn't even have to do it. I cleaned up. I vacuumed. I did, it. I did everything. Don't y'all go there. Y'all stop that. It scared me. But you, somebody's got somebody's to wash the dishes. The spiritual oneness. Let's talk about that real quick. Kelly and Spencer, y'all coming out here. I want, we'll talk to them too. Y'all come out. Let's talk about the spiritual oneness real quick. Somebody has to pray in the family. Somebody has to call out your wife or your husband's or your children's name. There should be a verse in your household. Stop nourishing the physical and let's talk about the spiritual. You know what will happen once the spirit is growing and once the soul is nourished? You won't need a big old house. You won't need near the things you think you need when you start nourishing the soul. Now, my daughter's going to scream for a new app. I got it. But she's going to paint my toenails, too. See, I have nothing. I'm, I'm not ashamed anymore. I'm a dad. I have nothing. You know what painting toenails does for her? It probably does more for her than me. But I'm saying it, it's, the, it's the time. Be careful that you don't pay your children off. And you send them away. And you tell them, you had it better than I did. No, I didn't have a dad either. He worked all the time. That's the, I don't want my daughter to say that marathon was my first love. And you can't, and listen, you got to be careful when it comes to your soul. These two right here, they've been married how long? How long have you been married? Almost a year. Oh, you better, you sure? You may ask Kelly for sure? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Try. Kelly, how long have you been married? Almost a year. Almost a year, okay. They're, they're together on this. These two are looking for their first house, okay? Yay, yay, first house, we're praying for that. We're going to take an offering up and pay for your house. That's yes. what we, is that okay? Is that all right? Uh, yeah. These two are in love. Okay. I didn't do that. I just messed with you. But they're in love. And we're going to do everything we can as a church to help them stay in love. Because these, these people are a force for God. I'm telling you. They're a force. They can sing and do anything. And so they have this song that I want you to hear. It's called The House That Built Me. Yeah, 
one of my favorite songs. I love to hear that song. We'll do some more favorites next week. I don't know if you've paid attention this week. Um, her name is Lauren Hill. She's 19 years old. She went to Mount St. Joseph College. And right before she entered college, she was a basketball player and she could not wait. She said her dream was to put on her tennis shoes and stand on the wood floor and play her first college game. Found out she had brain cancer. They could do nothing about it. Less than two years to live. And uh, this week she died. And I don't know why this has bothered me so. I have tried to work through this. I guess talking about the family, how important it is. I mean, at some point, this is going to be important or it isn't going to be important. And then these things like this happen and you think, this, I should have had more time. I should have made things count, you know. The NCAA found out about her story. And um, this is something I cannot, I cannot believe they did this. They moved the entire basketball season up. They opened up the first game at Xavier University. Over 10,000 showed up. <clears throat> the other team 
I watched this. I knew what was going on. And she couldn't hardly get down the floor. And she couldn't have any, she had no feeling much in her right hand. So she had to learn how to shoot left-handed. In the first basket of the game, she made it. And I watched the other team clap for her. She made over a million dollars for cancer research in her short little time that she had on this earth. Family matters. And I don't want to say, you know, I don't want to get down the road and say, you know what, I wish that I'd had more time for, with faith. I wish I had taken more time for my marriage. This is that day. This is that day. I don't care how many times you have to start over, how many times, if we don't nourish the soul, if we don't spend time with the people that we love, it's going to be gone. It's going to be gone. Today is that day. I, can, I could hear the, the pain in the, in the voices of the parents. I could just hear it. I'm going to make the most of the time that I have with my family. I'm going to love faith. I'm going to teach her how to keep bees, for heaven's sake. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to make the most time with my wife. We should all think like that. It's 27 years we've been married. I cannot believe it. <laughs> cannot believe it. Faith is 11 and she's gonna want a car, a boyfriend. I'm going, oh. And then one day she'll be married and then I'll catch her on the weekends, but not today. Today, I got faith. Today, I have them. Stand with me.